Using a 48-inch display as a computer monitor on a desk was something unheard of just a few years ago. With OLED displays becoming more affordable, even ROG is getting in on the action. Does the PG48UQ OLED gaming monitor live up to its TV cousins? You have come to the right place to find out more. If you are thinking of getting an LG C1 monitor or using a massive display on your desk, make sure that you have a surface that's deep enough. My desk has a depth of 800mm to allow me to use this in comfort. If you have a monitor arm, the PG48UQ only supports a 300 by 300 mm Visa wall mounting. Sadly, this means I've been unable to use my Ergotron desk mount compared to the LG C1 from before. The legs for this display are actually pretty wide and measure 29mm deep and 750mm wide. So you will need to make space to ensure you're not too near the monitor. Otherwise, you're in for a neck ache. Apart from that, this monitor looks great for most content, but you might want to hold off for an alternative if you can wait. Before we go into more detail, here at Geek Culture we cover plenty of topics from tech, toys and entertainment, so the next video might be different from this, but we guarantee it to be geeky. I've been checking out plenty of displays and consumers are spot for choice. If you are looking for an OLED display with a display port, look no further than the ROG PG48UQ. It seems that ROG and Alienware are fighting a proxy battle for LG and Samsung with the AW3423DW monitor. Now we are back to my room and the light is pretty much controlled here. With no glare or direct sunlight hitting this display, this is by far one of the best conditions to use the monitor. This OLED display measures 1068 by 686mm and features small bezels that we have come to expect with all modern displays. What really stands out is how slim the unit is as a whole, there's no additional power adapter that sits awkwardly outside of the monitor. Compared to the Alienware AW3423DW, the ROG PG48UQ runs quiet. With displays this size, there tends to be quite a bit of heat generated by the screen. However, I've noticed that the issue is not as pronounced as the Alienware, which came in pretty loud and warm in comparison. ROG claims to have placed a custom heatsink at the back to help reduce temperatures and is fanless by design to keep the display quiet. Cooler is always better for performance and to prevent burn-in, but we have to see how the display holds up over time. There's no RGB lights that ROG loves to throw into their products, save for a small logo in the front. Even that can be turned off from the settings menu. With a 98% rating in the DCI P3 and 133% in the sRGB color space, it's hard to find an OLED that doesn't do its job. For anyone getting this monitor for PC use, they can expect the richest visuals ever, and like they say, once you've used an OLED, it's hard to go back to anything else. By default, the brightest this display can go up to would be 450 nits, which is not actually that bright. However, by going into the menus, and changing the color temp to 10,000 kelvins, we are able to hit 872 nits peak brightness. Do note, this makes the display look cooler than the default. From the menus, you are able to get a few options that gives users access to gaming, cinema and console HDR presets, but there's little discernible difference for the different modes. Be sure to test out the various presets to see what suits your taste and the content best. Overall, the colors on this display look great. And if you're looking to use this professionally and would like to ensure that your edits look great across multiple displays, I would imagine that creative folks might look at this display if you like a mix of work and play in a single display. The parent company for ROG, ASUS, has a good track record when it comes to displays overall and the PG48UQ does not disappoint. However, from our test, it will appear that the early unit we've received does struggle has the scene changes to display pure blacks. Getting up close, you are able to see the OLED pattern quite prominently. We found that the issue here is how Windows HDR works together with the monitor. For best results, the preferred option would be to turn Windows HDR off. Outside of the PC environment, do note that popular streaming services like Disney Plus and Netflix does not seem to recognize this display, despite it being able to project in 4K or HDR10. This results in a less than enjoyable experience overall. Sitting close to the display, it's hard to discern if there's any reflectiveness on screen. 
ROG has implemented an anti-glare micro-texture coating to the screen which I found to have helped improve the viewing experience. With most folks who are looking to buy the ROG PG48UQ, they'll most likely sit up close to use the display. Outside of gaming, applications such as Power Toys, Fancy Zones help segment the screen into grids to help organize windows. I've used this since the days of my LG C1 and will recommend it to anyone to use this display optimally with minimal neck strain. One of the key issues from making this display truly great is that they have not gone all the way when it comes to ports. We have one HDMI 1.4, two HDMI 2.1 ports, and two HDMI 2.0 ports. If only ROG had made all the HDMI ports 2.1, it would have future-proofed this display easy. An issue with the ports placement is that there's a clear lack of space with all the wires to trail out. With the HDMI 2.1 ports pointed downwards, it will compete with the panel placement and it can get messy. With the ports mostly located on the right of the display as you're facing it, do be mindful on how your desk is set up. In addition, the display has a generous amount of USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A ports as well. These can be found at the top and at the side of the display. The ports on the top are a bit questionable, but you might find a home for it for devices with wireless dongles. When it comes to PC gaming, this is where the monitor truly shines. With two HDMI 2.1 ports for your PS5 and Xbox Series X, console fans are not left out. Being one of the few OLED displays in the market that support G-Sync, you're assured that you'll be able to get the best out of this 3840 by 2160 4K display to enjoy HDR10 in its full glory. Featuring a max refresh rate of 130Hz, this feature is not enabled out of the box by default, so you need to navigate to the menus to turn it on manually. In addition, the display also offers a few options as well if you'd like to go from a 4K display to an ultra right in the form of a 34 inch 21 by 9 aspect ratio. There are additional options for 24 inch and 27 inch as well. These modes all enjoy the same high refresh rates and 0.1 ms response time. If PC gaming is a priority, the ROG PG48UQ is by far one of the best picks. However, when it comes to the console experience, the colors do come across as more muted as we'll like. I imagine that a firmware update is necessary to get the most out of the display. For any user investing into OLEDs, it might come down to a toss-up between getting an LG TV or the ROG. The display comes with a fairly simple remote that opens up a rudimentary UI which we see with pretty much all ROG displays out there. When the OLED alternatives come with a proper interface, ROG might need to step up more to show greater value in the product's overall experience outside of just hardware. At the moment, the display has the monopoly of being one of the few rare OLED displays that come supplied with DisplayPort 1.4 and are native for PC users to make full use of. In addition, from time to time, there's a pop-up that appears to remind users to run a pixel refresh. Having followed the prompt, it still pops up time and again, which might be rather irritating for some. Most self-respecting PC gamers will likely opt for a solid headset to use at the desk, but the PG48U Cube has included speakers if you'd like to give your ears a rest. Sound-wise, the audio comes off as relatively hollow and it's not one of the stronger points of the display despite featuring Harman Kardon branding. I don't like this part of Midgar. Back when they were still building Midgar, there was an accident and the plate fell. From a hardware standpoint, the ROG PG48UQ is a solid contender if you're looking for a OLED display alternatives outside of LG especially for PC use. There are a few questionable moves with the lack of complete HDMI 2.1 support, which I would wager that it ultimately will come down to the price for this display in your market, between this or a proper OLED TV. However, the inclusion of a display port is by far one of the most compelling reasons for the PC master race folks to sit up and take notice. That's it, thanks for watching this video. If you thought OLED was good, Check out my current favourite TV of 2022 right now. It's surprising that this TV from Samsung hit all the right notes. 
A small warning though, the moment this TV powers on, you might get sucked in and wonder yourself hours later, wondering where all that time went after staring at this beauty of a display.